right, our guest on the podcast today is the winningest player in KU history with a combined record of 132 wins and only 17 losses in his four years at KU. He's a national champion, four, excuse me, maybe five-time Big, you know, four-time Big 12 champ. I'm sorry, four-time <laughs> Big 12 champ. He's Mr. Kansas. He was Mr. Kansas basketball in 2007. Bottom line, guys, he's a winner. Welcome to the podcast, Tyrell Reed. How you doing, man? Thanks for joining, man. I'm great, Hawk. How you doing, man? You know, I can't complain, man. Just, you know, it's living another day in, in, in the life of a pot, podcast guy, man. But excited to have you on, man, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, hey, tell everybody, can you fill Jayhawk Nation in? What's up with Tyrell Reed? What's Tyrell Reed doing now? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm living here in Lawrence. Uh, I'm a I went to I played overseas for a year. Um, came back, went to PT school in Kansas City at KU Med, and then now I'm a physical therapist in Lawrence. I uh, I work part time here, uh, kind of for Ortho Kansas, and then I, I work part time at KU now. So I'm I'm back in the training room that I used to get treatment in, uh, helping these yeah. athletes out. Hey, hey, that's awesome, man. What what better not person to to have such, especially a, a great ambassador for the program, and now being able to to, to work directly with the, the KU athletes, no better person than Tyrell Reed. I got one quick question for you, Tyrell. You still got your bounce, man? I can still jump. I probably feel better <laughs> today than I did when I was playing. You know how that is when you yeah for sure. Take, you take you take some time off. You're not so beat up, and uh, yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Feel good. Hey, well, let, let's just dive into it, man. You obviously you know Selection Sunday just. Yeah, uh, just happened. Uh, March is obviously here. You know, it's that madness time of the year. And the Hawks were looking pretty good, obviously, with their last game against Oklahoma. They had some little momentum being stopped, obviously, being having to pull out of the Big 12 tournament uh, because of that positive case. What do you think the Hawks need to do to keep their momentum running into the tournament next week? You know, I think they just got to stick to their guns. I mean, they've uh, they've really turned into a great defensive team. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I was talking to Coach Q um, a few days ago, and uh, they, they kind of just midway through the Big 12 said, hey, we're going to try to keep uh, – I can't remember the numbers exactly. I think it's like they're trying to keep all the teams under 34% from the three-point line. They're trying to keep uh, teams' field goal percentage below 39% uh, overall. And, man, I, don't, I think they've done that nearly every yeah. game since yeah. they started that. So uh, just keep up the intensity and – uh, I mean, they're a good shooting team. They haven't maybe made as many shots lately, but if they can start making shots and anything can happen in the NCAA tournament, I mean, they could be in yeah. for a, a deep run. I mean, you you know of all you know of all people, obviously being a, being a champion, a, a 2008 champion. I mean, can you just talk about that mindset of no matter what it may look like in the tournament, whether it's the odds are for you or the odds are against you, keeping that strong mindset and staying focused and staying together as a team. Can you talk about that? Put, putting you back in that 08 mindset, can you talk about that mindset it took for you guys? Because at, at one point in time, it looked good for you guys. And then another point in time, it didn't look so good to you. But can you talk about that mindset, having that, the importance of having that strong mindset in, the, in tournament time? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's valuable right now for those guys that they've been kind of stuck in this COVID season all year, right? So you haven't maybe had the fans, you haven't had your friends, you haven't had your family. So that team is your family right now. Um, yeah. And I think in the NCAA tournament, it, it 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 even shrinks a little bit more. You try to take yeah. all the all the things that could get in your way and just try to push them to the side for this two, three week run here. Um, and I think they'll do that. Um, I, I, I really do. I, you know, I hope with uh, these, these COVID cases, it's just really unfortunate because they've done such a good job all season with, uh, with staying healthy and, and, do, and, you know, this is probably just a fluke deal, you know, it's just, uh, yeah. it's out there, but just, uh, just sticking together uh, no matter what uh, it's, it's not even going to be as different in, in, in years past. I always thought when you got to the NCAA tournament, it felt weird. You know, it's just like you could play at a random time. You got <laughs> maybe half your fans in the stadium. The other teams are, are, are just there kind of watching. But this year it's going to be like, man, we haven't had fans all year. We're just going to yeah. go out and go and play. Yeah. And, you know, you, you mentioned obviously with uh, obviously some of the, the, the positive COVID tests. 
How do you think next week, you know, obviously Coach Self's been, you know, playing five guards at some point in time. How do you think that could run to their advantage next week in the tournament? I mean, that's – anytime I think in the day and age of basketball, when you can switch five on everything, yeah. like, <laughs> it, you're, you're in an advantage because you can play faster. You can be a matchup nightmare for the other team no matter – yeah, uh, what they've got. So I, I think that plays into our advantage. Coach Self obviously is, you know, a mastermind at playing the yeah. matchup, figuring out. He'll have it dialed in no matter what. If they can only go with five people, they'll figure it out. You know what yeah, I mean, I, I, I have that kind of confidence in them, but uh, it's going to be interesting. And I, I just really hope that, you know, the guys are healthy and everyone feels safe and, uh, yeah. and we're able to enjoy March Madness that we got, we missed out on last year. You betcha. And like you said, man, we, we missed out on it. And obviously last year, you know, with Doak and Dotson, I mean, and I'm just going to go off script. Do you think last year's squad had a great chance of being a national championship, a national uh, champion? A hundred percent. I mean, yeah. they were, they were just knocking people off uh, right and left. They had all the momentum going into the big 12 yeah. tournament. Uh, I mean, I think it, everything was just lining up for them to, uh, they had a, you know, an unbelievable point guard, a, a dominant big man, and then yeah. just great pieces around them to, uh, to make that happen. And it was unfortunate. I mean, all, every team had to go through it, but kind of, kind of stinks when you're the number one team in the country oh, yeah. and you don't, even get a, you don't even get a chance. That's how, I mean, like if the tournament ended today, I think that's yeah. kind of how Gonzaga would feel. And they're, they're a strong team. And obviously, you know, I got my Jayhawks tech going all the way like I do every year. I never shout out Coach Self. Um, but let's talk, let's talk Dewan Harris. You know, he's mm -hmm. really, he's really starting to make his his mark on the team lately. Yeah. How do you think he impacts the game most? You know, I think he's just one of those guys that can play with anybody because uh his game uh just sets up to where he's gonna be a defensive menace. Uh he's gonna get guys the ball where they need it in the scoring position. And then uh, I think he's just a winner. You know, I think he, he tries hard. He doesn't care yeah. if he scores 20 points or he scores two points, you know, he just wants to win. And, and I love his aggressiveness and how he doesn't back down from anybody. And he's only going to keep getting better. He's just a young yeah. kid. Yeah. Very, like you said, man, very young kid, only going to keep be getting better. And I think he definitely has, uh, he has a, he has a big upside, obviously getting some good minutes his, his red shirt freshman year, you know, being able to finish out, you know, hopefully three years, uh, three years stronger with the, the Jayhawks. I really look forward to seeing his growth. But let's see, I, I want to talk to you about this. I saw a, a, a recent stat about Marcus Garrett being mm -hmm. one of only three players in KU history with 500 plus rebounds and 340 plus assists. Yeah. The other two players, Kirk Heinrich and Danny Manning. Do you think Jayhawk Nation takes Marcus Garrett's greatness a little for granted? Oh, for sure. I, I think that, uh, you know, no matter how good he is defensively, people always say, you know, like, well, maybe he wasn't the best shooter. Or, uh, maybe, you know, he didn't knock down tons of shots, but like, that's maybe not his, what he's yeah. known for. Like, yeah, he is, he just takes one person out of the game on the other team, every <laughs> single game. It's like, yeah. so you're playing five on four, um, yeah. essentially. So, um, he's been an unbelievable asset for KU over these years. And, um, you know, I definitely think, like you said, I mean, just look yeah. at the stats, how many games he's had to play, how many wins he's had to have and how, how much of an impact he's had on a, a program like Kansas that, you know, he's a guy that we're lucky of, to have been able to watch. For sure. For sure. And we'll, and we'll be missed. Hopefully, you yeah. know, I know Jayhawk nation is hoping that he will take that, uh, that extra year, uh, due to COVID. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, we would definitely love to have the, yeah. in my opinion, the the two time defensive player of the year coming yeah. back to the three P that. So seriously, uh, yeah. So Ocha Abachi, you know, really, he's really turned it on lately as well too, and he's been pretty consistent throughout throughout the years. Really turned it on against that Oklahoma game. Do you think he's a guy that has the ability to turn to make a run, kind of like Malik Newman did in that performance yeah. of, of the month of March? Definitely. I mean, I think he's set up to, uh, to, you know, to be a leader for our team, especially, you know, he's, when he's knocking the shot, his outside shot down, he yeah. is, it just gets every other part of his game going. And I mean, he's such a great athlete. And I think sometimes probably he doesn't show that enough that coach self gets like, yeah. Hey, pack the basket a little bit, but um, 
if he can make some shots, I think that just opens up and spreads his game where he can be one of those guys that we can go to down the stretch and he'll get us what we need. Yeah, you bet. And, you know, Ochai, you know, he has – once he starts realizing, at least in my opinion, that he has the green light. I mean, ever yeah. since they pulled him from that red shirt year and relied on him so much to – I mean, to a certain degree, they pulled that red shirt because he needed to be able to give the Jayhawks a – an extra edge, an extra lift, yeah. and, you know, this is his third year. So, I mean, you know, as me, I'm as a player, as a former player, I'm just looking at him like, man, you got the green light, man. You can, yeah. the, the ball's in your court, man. Once you really decide to, you really want to take off and, 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 uh, and really put this team on your back, you, Hey, it's already ready for you whenever you want to, whenever you want to reach into that. Um, yeah. Take the reins off. Cause yeah, you betcha. You betcha. You know, you know how it is. I mean, Coach Self just he he has high expectations for all of his players. Yeah. Um, and you've got to earn his trust. And <laughs> he, he's been here now for, like you said, you know, this is going on his third season and he has earned Coach Self's trust. <laughs> and it's 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 one of those things that that now if you don't shoot it, you're hurting us. You know, yeah, you're hurting yeah, yeah. If, you don't, if you don't attack, if you don't drive the ball. So we would much rather you miss a shot or make a turnover being aggressive to the basket because you're our guy. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I really do think that Ocha, you know, will step up really big in March. And obviously with them not even be able to play in the Big 12 tournament due to COVID, yeah. I think a lot of these guys are going to be hungry and ready to go out and play, uh, especially when they get that opportunity. Um, let's right. talk a little, hey, Mitch Lightfoot, man. It was great <laughs> to see Mitch Lightfoot have some success against OU. Uh, this is a guy that's just been, you know, he's done every and any, any and everything that you can ask for being an ambassador for, for KU. But it was also, like I said, really good to see him get some, uh, some minutes and be productive as far, far, as far as getting those minutes. Can yeah. you speak about how a guy like Mitch Lightfoot, who has been patient and worked his butt off every day and out, uh, even when he isn't filling up the sash at, excuse me, even when he's not filling up the stat sheet, how he can be important to this team going deep into the run in March. Yeah, I mean, he's just, like you said, he's kind of a lunch pail guy. He uh, he comes every day, uh, and and he knows what he's going to bring to the team. He's going to bring effort, energy. Um, you know, I think he, he stepped out, hit a three the other game, uh, you know, so yeah. just, just playing with some confidence. And you know, like you said, he's been here for, for multiple years, and he knows the system, and uh, I, I, he's just one of those kids that you can rely on because he's going to, he's going to come out there and give you his 10, 15, 25, who knows how many minutes we, we're going to need from him, but the dude bleeds red and blue. So he'll go out yeah. there and do he can to, to help us win. And you know, a lot of people forget about Mitch too, man. He was Arizona's player of the year when he came out yeah. of high school. I mean, big high time recruit. So just might not have gotten the minutes at KU, which is a, a top a top five program, Blue Blood. But that still goes to show Mitch knows how to play. And not only does he know how to play, he's been battling against guys like Doak and a <laughs> lot of uh, top guys every day in practice. So yeah. it's good to see him get out on the court and be able to show what he's been doing in practice. Because I like, like you said, man, I think they're going to really need – Mitch Lightfoot down the stretch to be able to go as far as they can in the tournament. They're going to need everybody. Yeah. You know, guys like, like you said, Dewan, Mitch, uh, Christian, you know, it's just going to be, uh, it's just getting some confidence going. Right. You know, yeah. like just being out there in the moment, see the, see the ball go through the net and then you yeah. realize let's go like, let, let's play. And, and I'm, I'm excited to watch how they, uh, you know, come into this tournament, not being able to play last year. I know I'm sure they're going to be so hungry, especially with uh, missing out on the big 12 tournament. Cause I definitely think they were going to have Texas number. I mean, it's hard yeah, to, sure. hard to, to beat a team three times, especially, you know, coach self coach team. And yeah. I, I, we've always had good luck against Texas in the big 12 tournament. So I, <laughs> I was feeling really, really good about that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sad that it didn't happen, but I know those guys are going to take that, that energy uh, and be ready for the tourney. Yeah. And you mentioned, obviously, we mentioned Christian Brown, and you mentioned him as well, too. Yeah, hey, he's had a great sophomore season. Uh, fellow Kansas kid, man, you can kind of relate to that. I can kind of yeah. re relate to that. Uh, who just can shoot the rock, man, can yeah. shoot the rock. What do you think he needs to do to continue to reach his ceiling for the Jayhawks? 
Yeah, I think it's probably with him. It's just a little bit more consistency because we've seen it when he's when he's on. I mean, the dude, yeah. he's had a games of 30 this year. Uh, yeah. That doesn't happen unless you're a player. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just a, a kid that I think is going to come into his own the more and more he plays and the more confident and settled he feels out there. And, and he's kind of gotten a, a, a chance to, to work through it this year because, I mean, he is a, a guy that can be a matchup nightmare for a lot of guys. He's six, seven, six, eight, uh, can mm-hmm. move well, play yeah. inside, outside. But when he gets his shot going, uh, he's tough to beat. And I think, again, he's another guy like Oach that is super athletic that yeah. as soon as they see their first shots go in and they start to, to maybe feel yeah. themselves a little bit, no, yeah. I, can get to the, I can get to the bucket and, uh, and be aggressive. Yeah. And, you know, you just mentioned it. You talked a little bit about matchups. You know, March is all about matchups. Yeah. What type of team do you think would be a tough matchup for, for the Hawks? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think right now, the, depending on all of our COVID situation and things, you know, just like a, a team that's got some bigs that can play, yeah. that maybe a team that kind of slows it down a little bit and, and just tries to ground, ground and pound you. Uh, and that being the NCAA tournament, we know a lot of times those games, you know, shorten up and yeah. – uh, becomes a possession basketball game so you so that could be a bit challenging but like you said if we can play small then I think that's going to cause other teams some some struggles and we can hopefully dictate the tempo um, and play a little bit faster so you know I think a team that's big will will give us some challenges and then obviously you know if a team anytime the NCAA tournament you have a team that makes a lot of shots then (laughs) then you're in for a long night and sadly I've I've seen that a few few times myself Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think, I think I have too. So I think we've all, I think not just, not just us, the Jayhawks, it's every team that experiences yeah. that when you got, it doesn't matter who you are. When you have a team that's making shots, no matter how good of a team you are and what your upside is, it's going to be a tough game because yeah. you know, the game, the game is dictated on if you're making shots or not. So that's what makes the score go up. So yeah. Uh, but you know I, I really I do agree with you uh, we could run into some teams that do have bigs that could give us a struggle but I think on the upside too you know our bigs you know you think about the progression of, of David McCormick and Huge. Uh, obviously you know how Jalen Will, Jalen yeah. Wilson has been evolving and now I think you have Mitch Lightfoot that you can also you know throw in that mix too because I think right now Mitch Lightfoot's playing going to be you throw him in the game he's going to be playing with a ton of confidence especially yeah. getting a good shot against uh, against OU and, and, and playing good. And obviously he's a guy that has just been, you know, he's been through the trenches his whole his whole career at KU, so he knows what to do. So I would love to see, you know, I, I do think that that having a playing against a team with bigs could hurt them, but also see it how, as, you know, playing against some teams with some bigs could also elevate a lot of our confidence in our bigs and, and they could yeah. be ready for that matchup. So it's going to be fun to see how that, how yeah. that turns out and see, you know, it's coach self team, man. He's going to have those guys ready and prepared and ready yeah. to, to react. So. Yeah. Um, I was looking so, at, so, when, what'd you say? My bad. No, I was, when I, when I saw the, uh, when I saw the bracket come out just what an hour ago, yeah. it was, it was funny that I feel like, you know, they always want the made for TV uh, matchups. Yeah. You know, I, saw, I saw Wichita State, who, you know, we've we've had some struggles with in the tournament. Oh, yeah. with them and I can't remember 15, 16, somewhere around there. Uh, and then VCU's on our side, oh, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, uh, they say that they don't look at that. But come on now. Let's, yeah. let's be real. Let's be real. I just, I, I just really felt like before. We had selection Sunday and the brackets came out. I just felt like I said, man, we're probably going to be on the same side as Gonzaga for some reason. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, we're probably going to be on. I, I thought that we would be playing. We'd have a chance if we won the first game to play Missouri the second yep. game, yep. which that's that's not going to really be the case. But I just knew yep. somehow Missouri and Gonzaga would somehow end up on, on our yep. side. So, I mean, I agree with you, man. It, Hey, but pay the bills. <laughs> I'll say this too. I mean, get some, get some, pile on some wins. We've already played Gonzaga. Yeah. We've got the, we've yeah. got the tape is out there. Yeah, we know, we know what they do, uh, and that 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 can be to our advantage. You know, our our coaches will break that down and figure out uh, where we can uh, take advantage of some different things. And uh, so we just gotta 
roll the ball out there and see how see what happens. That's right, man. And you and you think back to that game when we played at Gonzaga. It was a tight game. They kind of yeah. ran away with it towards the end, obviously with free throws and fouls. But that was a tight game. So I, I I'm sure not only I, Jayhawk Nation, but yeah. you know those current guys in that locker room and that coaching staff, they love to they love to have that matchup again. A hundred percent. Yeah. <clears throat> They're so a different. Able, what? My bad. My bad. What's no, up? No, I'm saying they're a different team now, but we're a different team now too. So true. that's true. That's true. So you were able to experience both the highest success at in, in the NCAA tournament and the heartbreak of a tournament loss in North at, with North Northern Iowa. We kind of mentioned that a little bit. You say you've been on the the the, mm -hmm. the, the other scope of that. What does it take for a team to avoid that big upset? Or is there anything that they can do about it? <laughs> I mean, sometimes, sometimes there's nothing you can you can do about it. When a team's, uh, you know, hit hitting shots that you know maybe you haven't scouted before, uh, it's. I mean, like you said, it's a it's a shot making game. So if a team's yeah. really shooting the ball, I mean, you've got to do a better job of defending the arc and and, yeah. and getting out to them. So there's no excuse when it comes to that. Yeah. But taking it game taking it game by game, it's a it's a six game tournament. Uh, and you kind of break it into weekends, right? We got a two game mm -hmm. tournament here. We're trying to yeah. get to the next, next weekend. And, um, I think that's the biggest thing you can do. Uh, I've seen, I've seen, I, I've, I never lost in the same, same round. You know, we won it in, in 08, uh, sweet 16, my next year, uh, lost another round of 32 and then elite eight. So like, I've kind of seen the, uh, the highs and lows of this tournament, like, yeah. you know, you can only take it game by game and uh, and just hope that you're playing at your peaking and playing at your best that time of year. Yeah. Any current players that, that might even catch this, take that advice, man. <laughs> one game at a time. Don't look ahead. One game at a time. And I know, I know, you know, you know, and I know coach self, they make sure they make okay. sure that their mindset is very strong or one game ahead and never looking ahead. Hey, so last, last about the same, the, this year's team. And then we'll kind of talk a little bit more about Mr. Tyrell Reed. Like I like, I know you don't like hearing it, man. I know you're a very humble guy, but I love, I love talking about my former Jayhawks, my my fellow friends, man. Because uh, you, that, that's the cool thing about it. You guys don't like talking about yourself, but hey, I'll, I'll do some talking for you, man. But last thing, Tyrell, what do you think the ceiling is for this team in March? I mean, I, I legitimately think anytime you have, anytime you're a, a five seed and below, you're in the conversation, right? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter this time of year. We've, we've seen it. We've seen teams that are eight, nine seeds make it to the final four. So it, it, it yeah. really doesn't matter. You take it game by game, hope that you have the good matchups. Um, hopefully you have the health and that you get a few things to fall your way. So I mean, this is like Noah. This is like every other year at Kansas, in my opinion, that we're in the conversation and we got a chance to to got, cut down the nets in, in April. So uh, yeah. that's my hopes, um, and and hopefully we can just get healthy. And it's just a it's just a weird year, you know. Like <laughs> yeah. no matter what, this is going to be one of the weirdest NCAA turn. I mean, it is the weirdest NCAA tournament. Yeah. We're, all, we're all stuck in a bubble in Indy and and just trying to figure it out. They don't even know what time the games are going to be at. Yeah. And nobody knows what players are going to be there. I mean, there yeah. could be possible there could be positive tests for teams that, um, you know, that we don't know about right now. True, and true. It could, they could struggle getting into the bubble with, with their, uh, with their team. So yeah. we'll have to take it, take it day by day. Like we've been doing for the last year. All right, Tyrell. Hey, this is, I got to step away. I got to step away. My, my little dog got out. Hold on, man. Hold oh, you better get your dog. You better get your dog. I'm going to grab a drink. All right, man. I'm sorry. I'm back, man. <laughs> back we got a little Houdini dog, if you don't know, man. Don't, don't, Jeff, 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 don't worry about it. I'll, I'll edit that out. All right. <laughs> you guys, you guys are good. Keep, 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 keep it, just, just, Matt, just pick up wherever, got, wherever you want. He's got right, the magic. Cool. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. All right. So we'll move forward. All right. Okay. Mr. Basketball, Mr. Kansas Basketball. And I forgot to mention in the intro, too. You were also Gatorade, Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year. All right, so growing up in Kansas, did you always dream of playing for the Jayhawks? Oh, 100%. I mean, I was I was the kid when I was seven, eight years old coming to KU basketball camp. And 
and watching the guys, you know, I, uh, you know, the first teams I remember were the, the Paul Pierce, the Rafe of friends, uh, team. And then as I, as I got older, you I mean, it just went, you know, then I looked up to Kirk Heinrich. Did you, did you play with Kirk? Yeah. Yeah. He I was mean, my roommate too, man. <laughs> and he was, I mean, he was, he was the guy I looked up to. Like he was, I mean, he was a bad boy, you, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you know how good he was. Um, but yeah, I always wanted to be a, a Jay Hockett. It kind of just fell into my lap because they they recruited me late. Um, they kind of knew I was down the down the street if if they wanted to come take a look at me. <laughs> I was either going to go probably to UNC or Stanford, like either west East Coast or West Coast, and then KU kind of came in late. That's awesome. That's awesome. So hey, you play for your dad. Now, by the way, I love your dad, Stace, man, because you talk about coming to camps, man, <laughs> seven and eight, like. Stacy, man, your, your pops, man, hey, any kid that's came through KU camp at that second grade, he saw them first, man. And yep. like, that was my first experience as a as a uh, KU player working yep. camp. They always they threw me down with with uh, with your dad, with the younger kids. Man, yep. we have more fun than anybody. And literally yep. to this day, when I go back to camp, sometimes they try to tick, stick me with some of the older kids now. But yep. I'm like, man, I want to go back with Stacy, man. I yep. love it there, man. So uh you got it you had the op opportunity to play for your dad in high school yeah. how was that transition from playing from playing with your dad to going to playing from coach self you know it wasn't that 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 crazy really my you know my dad was uh he he had high expectations for me he he would never ask me to do anything he wouldn't ask another player to do um um and vice versa so i knew uh I knew where I stood with him always. And we were really good about keeping, uh, you know, the, the player coach relationship different than the father son relationship. Yeah. So, so that was, that was really helpful. And uh, I mean, he was my biggest supporter. He'd have done anything for me to, to succeed in basketball, to succeed in the classroom. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate to, uh, you know, to have had a dad that, you know, just looked out for me and uh, always had my best interests and yeah. it was great to play for him. So uh, we, uh, we had some success there and uh, then going to coach self. I mean, he's a demanding coach, you know, so it took me a while, I think, to get used to it at first, just because I'm kind of a perfectionist and there's no, there's no perfect basketball player. But yeah. once I kind of figured that out, as I got further along, then um, I think we got, we got along a little bit better and uh, yeah. I, uh, I just knew how to play for him. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So, Talk about it, man. I'm, I'm staying on Stacy a little bit, man. I'm going off yeah. script, man, because I just I love Stacy, man. Yeah. Talk about, you know, talk about how Stacy kind of helped you transition into your dad. <laughs> how he yeah. helped transition you into to KU. Just whether it was, you know, talks after practice, talks after game, just how did it, how did it, how did he help you and what did he do for you to help you come into KU with a strong mindset? knowing that, man, I belong here and I can play here and contribute. Yeah, I think I think one of the good things being a coach's son is is you realize that no matter what five guys are on the court, that coach is always looking out for what's in the best interest of their program, uh, for the university and, you know, for themselves, too. Right. Like they have a job yeah. to do um, and people are fired when they don't win. So yeah. like my dad always told me, if you're not playing, do you think it's coach self's problem or your problem? You know, mm -hmm. uh, you've got to, you know, figure out how to, how to change it because he's going to put the five best guys out there that he thinks it's going to give him the best opportunity to win because he's not in the business of losing. So if he, yeah. if you're not playing, there's probably a reason behind it. So awesome. I think, I think a lot of college guys and players can, you know, maybe have a hard time understanding that, but yeah. The, the coaches are going to put the best five out there. They're not trying to, to screw you, <laughs> you know, they really aren't because their job is on the line too. So if you can kind of like, Hey, from Charles, not like they woke up that morning. It's like, okay, the player I'm going to screw today. You. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and people, when you're young, you, you kind of feel that way, right? You're yeah. like, man, I, I know I'm better than this guy. Or I'm better than that guy. And, and you very well might be, but it's the, at that time, it's not giving you the best chance to win. So yeah. that's why you're not playing. That's great advice, man. Hey, so what was that translation, excuse me, that translation going from high school basketball? I'm not sure what conference you were in high school. Do you remember? 
small. <laughs> uh, right. So, hey, what was that yeah. transition like going from conference in high school to Big 12 conference basketball? Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a it was a big leap. I was lucky to play like AAU basketball as well. So, yeah. you know, I kind of got brought up that way of, you know, traveling around the country and playing against the best players and yeah. uh, doing things like that. So that helped me out a lot. Um, maybe not as much in the high school game, but for sure in AAU, I, I was yeah. prepared. Sense. But there's nothing like getting to college and just figuring it out. And yeah. we were, I mean, probably one, one of the best teams that we've had in the past 20 years at KU. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, my freshman freshman year when we won it all. So, I cut my teeth with the best of the best, and I just uh, tried to hang with them, and uh, it taught me a lot, and you know, it helped me be a, a a better player for sure. That's awesome. So I don't know if a lot of people know this about you, Tyrell, but you were a track star in high school, right? Uh, state I, champ I, and I long okay. jump, state yeah. champ and long jump. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess you know I I. Uh, I, I grew up doing like, like that was one thing my dad made sure that I was a well-rounded athlete that uh, he didn't want me to burn out on basketball even though mm -hmm. he's a basketball coach but yeah. he was my track coach as well nice. I played football I played football till I was in high school uh, was, he football coach too? was he football coach too for a while he was oh and geez he, he <laughs> Stacy does it all man <laughs> yeah. yeah he was like, the football coach for a while and then he gave it up and uh I was okay at track I I kind of like wish I would have tried to do like long jump at KU just to see if I could have competed. And if I, you know, my, your body changes a lot when you're yeah. 18 to 22 years old. So I got a lot more mature and I think I would have done okay, but who knows? Hey, so, you know, and you even mentioned it, mate, your pops made sure that, Hey, Tyrell, I know I'm the basketball coach, but you're going to play other sports. You're not just going to stick with one sport. Cause yeah. I think a lot of kids these days, they're, they're, they're specializing early, and, you know, obviously with, with the PT work that you do, yeah. how important is it for young kids to play multi-sports at a young age? Yeah, I think both physically and mentally, it's just super important that kids uh, are well-versed and just being an athlete, uh, first and foremost. Hold on. I'm oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> My phone's on like 20%. But uh, <laughs> basically, you know, I think just – just making sure you're a well-rounded athlete. It's going to make sure that you're going to have less injuries and, and overuse injuries in the future. Uh, but also just figuring out different ways to move and to, to not get burnt out on doing one thing over and over and over. And yeah. I love playing every other sport. I looked forward to, uh, I mean, I still always played basketball. Like that was, you know, like I go play, do track and then I go to the gym, but, yeah. uh, but it makes you a better athlete and you can bring different things to the game. I mean, how many NFL guys or NBA guys grew up playing football or, or, or running track, you know, it's, it, it, I don't think it's a good thing to be a one sport athlete. Yeah. All right. Your top three, your top three, uh, sports, spring, winter, and, uh, or excuse me, fall, winter, and spring. If you had to do it all over again, what's your three sports you sticking with? <laughs> if I had to do it over again, that, that'd be tough because, I'm a, I love to golf now and golf okay. season spring when, when I did get, hey, we got to get on the course this year Tyrell anytime okay we got to get I'm, on I'm, there man I'm, I'm, I'm ready whenever so yes. uh I mean I definitely would I, I love I love football uh so I am you know like my brother-in-law he played football so I, I've always kind of had a good uh good relationship and, and love to watch football basketball for sure in the winter and then uh if it was me personally trying <laughs> to like succeed I, I would i would do track but if it was for fun and it's just now then i'm probably playing golf hey but i hear i, I hear i hear you i hear you got a legit swing in golf though man uh, i'm okay i'm not yeah, that that means he's good fellas yep that's <laughs> hey that's just <laughs> humble tyrell man <laughs> i know i need to get gary woodland to give me some lessons so that's that, <laughs> that's what i'm looking for i will tell you this man gary woodland gave me some uh he gave me some putting advice that i still yeah. stick with today man and it's still working out great for me man <laughs> Yeah, you, you know when somebody that makes the big bucks like him oh, is yeah. giving, you better uh, you better listen. And he could retool my swing, and and uh, I I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to take his advice. <laughs> All right, so so you had the you had also had the, the opportunity to play with some uh, KU's all time greats. Yeah, Sharon Collins, the Morris twins, Mario Chalmers, Mario Chalmers. Out of those, out of those guys, who was the best at making opposing crowds 
quiet down. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I mean, my freshman year, I mean, Mario Chalmers, he hit some big shots, right? That dude, yeah. that dude <laughs> yeah. uh, was not scared of the moment. So uh, from in terms of the biggest shots to, to quiet a crowd, it, it would for sure be Mario. But um, if I was going to go into the trenches and need to uh, make sure that I was going to come out alive, I mean, I'm taking the <laughs> I'm taking the twins with me, probably. And hey, that's a that's a great bit. That's a great pick, man, because, you know, already know. It's like nobody ever wanted to mess with the twins. It's yeah. because it's like if you mess with one, you got to mess with the other yeah. one. Yeah. So, hey, that's a great pick, man. Coming out the trenches, you know, you got and, – and not only are, are they twins, they're, they're big twins. They're not like they're just like 5'11". No. 6'9", no. 6'10", just big. Big, big and body. Physical and strong. Yeah. Tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for that's sure. That's definitely a great pick. All right, Tyrell, so where was your favorite place to play on on the road in the Big 12? I mean, when we were playing Missouri, that would have yeah. to be my, just yeah. because of, uh, I, you know, I think the hatred kind of runs pretty deep for years and years and years there. Uh, K-State would be a close second. I mean, Bramlage, uh, you know, they always pack for the KU game uh, and, and they do a good job there. My least favorite place to play would have been Oklahoma State because I never won there. And uh, I don't know, I just didn't like all that orange, I guess. Hey, I want to tell you this, man. One thing that always annoyed me, and we we're fortunate enough to win a couple of times in there, but we we're fortunate enough to be on the other side of, of losing as well, too. Yeah. And Coach Self really didn't really like that. Obviously, Oklahoma State grad played yeah. play ball there. He hated it. But one of the things that always annoyed me, man, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, like, for real, I got annoyed. It was the, the cowboy. He used to sh go walk around and shoot that yeah. gun, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, for some reason, that just got under my skin every time. And, like, I just really had, like, thoughts about just going up and possibly tackling the guy. Man, just taking his guns and just running all over the court with him. This is the times when I was in the back and not playing. So I'm like, man, that just really got to me, man. But uh, <laughs> Oklahoma State was obviously a tough place. I definitely yeah. agree with you on that. And But I'm right with you. Missouri, K, KU, or excuse me, K-State. They always sit high on my list just because of the yeah. hatred level. And you can't do anything with the hatred level, man. No, nah, exactly. You're, you're playing your right. And that's what it should be. That's what's the yeah. best thing in college basketball. You can't get anywhere. You can't get in the NBA. Uh, maybe you can get a little bit overseas because there's some yeah. there's some definite hatred that runs overseas between teams for sure. But, uh, I mean, there's nothing like a college atmosphere where you've got students, you've got alumni, you've got yeah. fans that are just – uh they grow up that way uh yeah. to not like KU or to not like M Mizzou so uh those are some great places to play yeah you betcha hey so we we talked a little bit about the Moore Swins ability to intimidate other teams and yeah. just the type of morale they brought do you have a favorite uh Moore Swins story favorite Morris twin story um whew. Yeah, I mean, they just – I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I definitely know that if you're going to try to, like, mess with one of them, you're going to get the other. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I think I always laugh about the time at boot camp that, that one of them got super irritated with Coach Self and said, you know, we didn't come here to be on the track team. Uh, that was always funny. Uh, uh, oh, how did Coach Self take that, man? I mean, you can you imagine. Do extra running because of that? Oh, Yeah. I did, I did a lot of extra running in my four years. I, I'm glad that I, I did track and field in high school because my legs were well, well conditioned for the sprints that we ran in my four years. But, uh, I mean, you can imagine Coach Self wasn't too happy with that. But, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah boot camp now, I've, been on, I've been on that end where you're just like a couple players do or say something and you're just like, uh, he's like, all right, we're supposed to have the day off and now we're going to practice. You're like, <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah, we we're just gonna watch film, and now because such and yeah. such wants to be a butthead, we're gonna go ahead and practice again. Oh, yeah. because such and such missed class, we're gonna yeah. do a two a day. Oh man, you're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah All but right, so hey, it <laughs> so works. Hey, another fun fact, you know, good stat, awesome stat. You are an academic All American. 
how do you how did you how did you balance basketball as well as getting your degree? Can you talk about the importance of being able to balance academics at a high level and then on top of playing for a high level basketball program? How were you able to balance the two of those and still be sane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's all about balance. Uh, it's like, you know, it. It's just putting in the work, you know, making sure that you you set aside time to to do your your studies and yeah. and also to be successful on the court. And I was lucky; both my parents were teachers growing up, so education was always important in our household. And um, I knew that basketball was only going to take me so far. Uh, everybody's dreams to play in the NBA. My dream was playing the NBA. Um, yeah. You know, I was able to play overseas for a little bit, and and then you know realized that I was going to have to to do something different and. Uh, in, in school, I just uh, I had I had a good staff around me, you know, with with Scooter Ward and and yeah. uh, Vince and Bobby that are up in the the offices taking care of the guys and make sure that that they are getting in all their classes and, and doing the studying they need. But you know, I was just lucky to uh, have a good support staff, including my family and, and the, the coaching staff, and just uh, you just make it work, man. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> you know, we mentioned and you mentioned obviously as well too. Uh, you're a physical therapist now. If you could give one piece of advice to young athletes to help keep themselves healthy, what would yeah. it be? Um, I think we talked. I think we hit on it already. I think it's just being uh, try to be a robust athlete. Don't just do the same thing every day because our our body's not meant to move that way. Um, especially you know if you're you know playing baseball year round. I mean you're not meant to be throwing every single day 365 days a year so um just be an athlete go play sports go go play, hang with your friends like be a kid like that's the biggest yeah. thing don't don't try to be be an athlete just be a kid just be a kid i like that i mean that that's one of the coolest things I've, I've heard in a while man don't try to go out and be an athlete just be a kid i like that tyrell all right tyrell so hey we're gonna Hey, we're going to end with some quick fire questions, man. Get you, right. uh, get you back on your way, man. So you can go back and be a, uh, be back and go back and be a full-time dad, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully he's asleep. Yeah. There you go. That Good timing. Good timing. Yeah, right. My wife probably thinks I've tried to do some things like that as well too. Yeah, right. Disappear right. when it's time, when he's up and ready. Exactly. And getting when he... <laughs> exactly. yeah, I got a meeting around six 30 or seven in that bedtime. <laughs> All right, Tyrell. Hey, do you have a favorite coach self quote that sticks with sticks with you today? Favorite coach self quote. Um, um ba basically, just you never want to coach energy and effort. And he said that in basketball and in yes. life. Yeah. Uh, and I, I and I, I I completely agree with that. Right. You you can always have a good uh, effort, and you can always bring energy to whatever you're doing. So. Uh, and that just that goes on the on the court, but also uh, being a dad, going to yeah. going to work every day. So yeah. that's a um, that sticks with me. Yeah, you betcha. I, I remember hearing that a couple of times as well. Me too. <laughs> sure. Hey, so if you could have played with one Jayhawk before and after your time at KU, who would it be and why? We'll start Ooh. with before. Before. Oh, that's a good one, man. Before. Uh, Man, I, and I, I grew up just idolizing these guys. I mean, I had, <laughs> I had every poster on my wall. Uh, I mean, the the era of the the Drew Good and the Nick Collison, the Kirk Heinrich, yeah. the Oshie <laughs> era. That, that was like my era. That was where I was old enough to know that these guys were really good, and that was something I wanted to be like. But it would probably have been Kirk because uh, yeah. he. Like I wore a Kirk Heinrich jersey to my K State visit. Um, he was kind of my. What? Hold on, hold on, man. We won. <laughs> what? Tyrell? Yeah. I, I didn't. What? Even, I didn't think about it. I because because it wasn't a KU jersey. It was just, that was when like jerseys were kind of the cool thing to wear, right? You got your big oversized jersey, and I had my my Chicago Bulls Kirk Heinrich jersey that I wore to the. Yeah. To my visit uh that that dates me that when jerseys were cool to wear but uh, i know i know well hey, but, they're, they're, they're still kind of getting back into it man math he's all about he's all about the jerseys now man i gotta get a jersey i need oh, the yeah. C, i need the Devonte. i gotta get the yeah. Giannis. so he it might be coming back again oh, yeah. it might be. <laughs> yeah what was cool 20 years i mean did did you, how how long were our shorts when we played 
And how they say, my shorts were like the trees, man. It was like almost down to my ankles. I always like think back. I'm like, how do I even go do a between the legs move without having right. the ball hit, 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 hit the inside, man? I don't know. We just did it, right? It was what was cool. We just did it. Yeah. All right. So if you had to pick one player after you got done, who would it be and why? Um, you know, I think it would have to be. Just when I was around him, I, I think for me it would have been Devontae Graham. Yeah. That, that yeah. dude just uh, is one of the most positive, vibrant, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the winner, uh, yeah. not only in sport but in life. You know, I, yeah. I, I think he just uh, exudes this uh, radiance and energy yeah. that I think would have just been uh, amazing to be around in a locker room. Yeah, hey, that, that's a great pick, man, because – I would have liked to be more around Devontae Graham because I, I think right now he would have shaped me to be an even better person than I am now just by yeah. – I think that's just the type of guy he is. Like, I would have been looking at him like, geez, man, I got to shape my life up. So that's a great pick with – that's a great pick with Devontae. Last one for you, Tyrell. If you had to play for one Big 12 coach that wasn't Coach, coach Self, who would uh-huh. it be? Is that like Big 12 coach, like that's coaching now or like when I was go, Yeah, you can go in your era or now. You can go your era now. We're just going to go Big 12. Um, man, the, in this, I mean, as you know, the Big 12 has an unbelievable yeah. slew of coaches right now. And, and, and they always have. But uh, right now, for sure. Um, he, I actually, uh, he recruited me and I think he's one of the most – Unbelievable coaches, unbelievable piece people would probably be Long Kruger right down yeah, at OU. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, Kansas guy, uh, and wherever he's gone, he has won. I mean, at every <laughs> every yeah. level. And I've never heard anybody say a bad word about him. So yeah. uh, I think he's a guy that, that would have been fun to play for. And, you know, I think all the players love playing for him. He, he kind of lets them be themselves. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think you could go wrong right now in the Big 12. There's a lot of great coaches. You're right, man. Well, Tyrell, I appreciate it, man. And that's it for today, Jayhawk Nation. Thanks for tuning in to Rock Chalk Jayhawk with me, Jayhawk, a podcast brought to you by the Field of 68 Media Network. Make sure you rate five stars, review, and hit the subscribe button on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcast from. Tyrell, man, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, man. Rock that Thank baby you. boy for me. Kiss the wifey. Well, yes. Hey, and get that A. Get that, get that, cl- get those clubs ready, man, because I'm gonna be sending you some Texas uh, over, uh, over, over spring, maybe over spring break when the weather gets a little bit more consistent yeah. for me, so we can get out there hit some links, my man. Let me know, man. Let me know. All I'm right. always. All right. All right. Appreciate you, man. See you, dude. Yep. Yep. Take it easy.